So today's show is going to be about Prop 64, and uh, we're going to have, tomorrow there's going to be an event, so I'm going to announce that, might as well announce it now. It's going to be a town hall, 7 to 9 p.m. tomorrow, at the Eric Kazada Center, so... I really hope you, you can join us, and we're about to start. Today, my guest is going to be Dragonfly Lelouz, and she actually wrote the Vote No on Prop 64 blog at blogspot.com, dot blogspot.com, and that's her analysis of this, uh, let's call it a, uh, a billionaire ballot investment called Prop 64. And it's not a, because I don't know any voters that I, no voter I know was initiate had took the initiative to, uh, Pass, take to have their rights taken away by this this egregious. Uh, let's call it civil rights violation. That is just uh, it's just in. Um, so we're gonna. Uh, Dragonfly is going to ring up at six oh five. So before that, I want to tell you what's been going on here. We got. I want to report on DJ Coute. She uh, had some interesting updates for us and. DJ is Patient Advocacy Network in Southern California, and she's a, a compassionate, which means giving away free medicine, a compassionate activist, a compassionate patient activist for cannabis. So DJ has done a lot of really good work, as has uh, Dragonfly Lelouz. So uh, DJ had to say this. She had to say, I hope all is well with you. Uh, none of the money... I. I Vote, write to you today to vote no on Prop 64, a.k.a. the Adult Use of Marijuana Act, and the links are, and more information below. It's posted on my page if you want to go over it by your, on your own. So, Denise Dory, just go, it's public, it's Denise Dory, look on my page, I've copied that, and a lot of links as well. So, all the money stays in Sacramento, none of the money uh, will benefit California, so I'm giving you a basic framework of this. Taxes and more tax. Medical, excise tax, state tax, gross receipts tax, use tax, cultivation tax, flower tax, leaf tax. All this is expected to raise the cost of cannabis by at least 40%. I've heard as much as 500%. I don't know. But uh, that doesn't include the licensing fees and the uh, significant expense for patients. And they have the nerve to call cannabis non-medical, which is... Just goes against my sen my sensibilities. That's my personal opinion, uh, and it co consolidates medical and non medical into one system, which is effectively in and eliminating medical cannabis as we know it. Uh, it happened in Washington State. So we also have uh, is funded by the interests of Monsanto, Big Pharma, Big Tobacco, George Soros. Is a major partner in Monsanto and funds the drug policy. I call them the Drug Policy Alliance, uh, which cannabis isn't a drug. I don't know why they. I think they should worry more about the drugs that are killing people. You know, that's just my opinion. A hundred thousand people a year die from prescription drugs taken as needed. So where's the outrage? Okay, the billionaire Sean Parker. Napster, you know the nap, the guy that wanted to take uh, take everyone's music and ma you know make a little money for himself, and then he, now he wants our cannabis after we legitimized it for ourselves. And uh, he's a, a big pharma investor. Oh, I didn't know he. Yeah, he's a big pharma investor. I guess it says here, and good friend of McC Lieutenant Gavin uh, Gavin Newsom, Newsom, Newsom. Um, 
So is also funding Prop 64. Weed Maps is a significant funder, and with CEO Justin Hartfield uh, supporting a big tobacco model. Now, have you ever seen anybody, by the way, have you ever seen anybody get arrested for handing a cigarette to somebody that isn't a minor? Well, you can't really give away pot. That's going to be illegal. But you can give away cigarettes and alcohol. What? Is, that's convoluted. So tell me, you know, I defy anybody to tell me that's not convoluted. And there's a lot of misleading language in, in Prop 64. Uh, it's a 62-page initiative, and it promises things and then takes them away. <laughs> it says to prevent, it, it claims to prevent DUIs, stop polluting the waterways, crack down cartels. It, uh, but there's already laws on the books in California that are, are regulating things like that. So <laughs> uh, it's an, an expensive regulatory scheme. Yeah. And we have a unique cal uh, cannabis heritage here. There's a lot of... Okay, here's our guest. So we're going to get get to butter... Uh, Dragonfly. Dragonfly, welcome to Liberal Buzz. Hi, Denise. Thank you so much for having me on your show. You had a great... Uh, yes, this is Dragonfly Laluz. Uh, Dragonfly Laluz wrote uh, Progressives Against Prop 64. Uh, it's, a, it's a great... Blog. It's on blogspot.com. I'll put the address up in my uh, when I when I later. So tell me, where are we now? Um, why aren't why aren't lawyers doing uh coming out against this? Is it do they really all want to make money? That's my that's the question really on my mind lately. So why are so many people for it? Because I like to, to talk. I talk to a lot of people that just there. There's a lot of people that are for this. Uh, my best guess is because they haven't read the initiative, um, and the, and I think they just assume. You know, they they just go by what other people tell them. 
um, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. The Drug Policy Alliance, for example, um, put out an article not too long ago. The, the headline is uh, 500,000 people arrested in California for pot in the last decade. But, of course, in that number, it looks big and scary, half a million people. But in reality, like, a lot has changed in California in the last decade, including a simple possession being downgraded to an infraction. So ever since that's happened, uh, misdemeanor cannabis arrests have gone down 93%. <laughs> so so, so there, there's not this urgency that, um, that a lot of pro Prop 64 people are, are pushing. And I think that people that don't bother reading things for themselves hear, oh, look at all these people getting locked up and just assume that's the truth without digging any deeper. And I think that's part of the reason why many people support this initiative. Well, and big pharma just—they're just so tricky. They, you've got big pharma giving people all. Uh, aren't they giving a lot of money to this initiative? Aren't, are they behind this? Big pharma, big pharmaceuticals. They, is it? I've been reading that it's, uh, that it's about big pharma takeover of our cannabis plant. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know that big pharma is, is donating to this initiative. I would be surprised if they were. Um, but I do know that George Soros, um, who is a major shareholder in Monsanto, um, is donating a lot of money to this initiative. Um, and I've heard a lot of people say that um, that if it passes, there's there's a great possibility that Monsanto will try to um, will create genetically modified seeds that ultimately you know will end up in everyone's garden, and then everyone will be beholden to Monsanto for whatever they produce, etc. Or Monsanto will be able to do them, as we all know Monsanto does, when uh, when their seeds end up, uh, you know, carried by the wind into other people's gardens. They sue the farmers, and they sue the pants out of them to the point that a lot of them commit suicide. It's and, not a pretty yeah. fight. And no one can sue them, thanks to Bush. So this is endorsed exactly. by Democrats, and it's re originally Republicans <laughs> that you know, gave them all the Let's power. Talk Let's talk about it being endorsed by, by the California Democrats. Um, as part of my research, I contacted them to ask why they would support an initiative that um, so blatantly would um, cause serious damage to our environment. And uh, I can't remember the person's name, I, I apologize, but the media coordinator for California Democrats um, um, told me that it's not required for, for, the, for the people that are voting on whether to endorse it. It's not required for them to read it. So I think that, you know, I have a feeling that they heard, um, you know, uh, some summary of what it would do, didn't bother reading the initiative at all, and just thought, oh, legalize, everybody wants to legalize. Because, of course, it sounds good. Everybody wants that. But when you actually read the initiative, you see that it's not quite a legalization initiative. Uh, what it does is legalize the commercial industry, but it doesn't legalize the plant so much, you know. And, of course, it does to a very, very minimal degree, but not to the degree that people would expect uh, when they hear that there's a legalization initiative on the ballot. Yeah. No, yeah, well, it's, and wasn't there an amendment in Section 10 it, it, here, and what about giving away cannabis? Now, why, that would be a crime. I, like, if you pass somebody a joint with that way in public, that would be a crime? I'm not sure about that. I don't believe that would be a crime uh, unless it, it, it's, if the people are under 21. Um, so if you're an adult, uh, you know, between 18 and 20, which includes teenagers, yeah, you know, some teenagers um, sharing a joint together, packing a joint back and forth. Um, then they could face six months in in jail um, for that for that minimal offense. Or an adult passing. Uh, excuse me, actually, it's it, it's uh, if you're 21 and over and you're passing a joint to someone who's under 21, then um, then the penalty for that is six months in jail, which is ridiculous. We all know that's ridiculous. That would mean that a that a parent who wants to celebrate legalization with his or her adult child who's 19 or 20 would be criminals under Prop 64 because it's, you're not allowed to share that. On top of that, I mean, the, the, the penalty for that is pretty harsh. Six months for passing a joint? Hmm. Currently, the penalty for that is a $100 fine. Let's so, talk about housing. People. What about housing protection? What if, you, what if your landlord knows you're smoking pot in the house? Uh, yeah, that could be problematic, and certainly if that exercise your right to grow the, that six plant, you would have to have written permission uh, from your landlord, which most people are not going to get. Um, that's one way that Prop 64 favors 
um, um, you know, the middle and upper classes um, and uh, sort of overlooks um, the economic disadvantage in the working poor. Most people that are middle class and below do not own their own home. And certainly in the urban poor communities, um, a lot of people not only don't own their own home, but they're renting their home from the government. And if you're in public housing and you are... Um, you get caught with cannabis, it's a big deal. Uh, you could get your um, you could get your rights re- revoked. Uh, you know, um, your privilege to live there would be revoked. Um, your access to student aid would be um, you become ineligible um, if you're caught. You know, any any misdemeanor offense. Or have um, your have your, What about your kid? What about child protective services? Yeah, CPS would not affect uh, anyone under Prop 64 unless that person is a medical patient. If you're a medical patient, then um, then there's a clause that protects uh, patients from having CPS take their children away. But now, from a recreational perspective, there is nothing to protect parents from CPS. Now, how hard would it be to get a medical card uh, compared to now after that would pass? I mean, to get a general practitioner who hardly ever even knows how to use, they don't know anything about cannabis. So how, how would we get them to prescribe for the same patients? Would those patients end up in rehabs? You know, it, it's hard to say. Um, it might not be that much more difficult to obtain um, to obtain uh, 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 permission to do a, do your physician. Um, you might not have to go through, like, a, you know, a serious physician. You might be able to just use the typical ones um, that exist. Um, it's kind of hard to tell this early in the game. Um, but I do know um, that that there's some talk about restructuring Prop 215 in such a way as uh, it's more restrictive um, in terms of what um, ailments that you have. But I haven't heard any confirmation of that. Oh uh, well, Sacramento legislators will be able to do whatever they want to us without us ever voting on it again, right? We won't be able to vote on cannabis anymore, will we? After this, it, it, isn't that part? Well, isn't that baked into it? Uh, yeah, what is baked into it is that um, is that legislators will be able to alter um, the law um, at will. Um, you know, as long as it is, uh, you know, as long as it's uh, um, to further regulate, control, and tax cannabis, they would be able to make um, whatever adjustments they want without voter approval. And that is that is a crucial reason why so many people are opposing this initiative. You have to keep in mind that um, most uh, local governments are not friendly toward cannabis. Um, some seventy-five percent of the state has already banned cultivation, or or is considering bans on cultivation. This is not, you know, there are certain areas that are friendly towards cannabis for sure, but they are few and far between. Um, and so, by allowing, um, you know, city council to decide. Um, you know, to decide what, you know, to decide how, how much people can smoke, et cetera, uh, or, or the levels, the potency levels, et cetera, and uh, the, what sort of regulations will be required in order to even have your own home grow, et cetera, I, I think is, is an unfortunate idea. Also, um, the local people should be able to vote and decide whether they want um, a commercial cannabis industry in their county. Um, it should not be left up to, um, to local legislators at all. They can't be trusted. No, they can't. And now we've got, we had Bernie come, Bernie Sanders came out and said that uh, he w- if he were a citizen of California, he would never vote on a marijuana monopoly. That was in... Oh, really? Cool. But then I saw he, the Bernie Kratz actually endorsed Prop 64, so I sent them your, your link, so hopefully they listened. <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you. I, I didn't know that he had said that, but I did know another quote... Um, when he was asked if uh, if he would vote for Prop 64, he said, well, I have something to the effect of, I'm paraphrasing, but he essentially said that he hadn't yet read the initiative and that if it, and that it was important to read it and that if it were reasonable, then maybe he would vote for it. But that's the key point. If it were reasonable and if he read it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the vast majority of the population of California has not read this initiative I have no plans to read this initiative, and this initiative is written in such a way as to turn people off from reading it. It's 62 pages of very dense legalese. Uh-huh. So, yeah, and I think that once people read it, they're going to vote no. Yep. I, everybody I know has uh, who read it. But, um, now, how about outdoor grows? Now, no more outdoor grows allowed means that we're going to use a lot more nuclear energy. Isn't that right? 
uh, yeah, California does, um, you know, still derive a lot of its energy from coal. Um, but it's not that, that, that um, outdoor growth would be full-on banned. Um, it's just that it, it Prop 64 allows local cities and counties to ban outdoor growth. And as I stated before, because so many um, jurisdictions are hostile for cannabis, it's very likely that most of them would probably ban outdoor growth. Exactly, leaving people to grow indoors, which, of course, as you mentioned, um, is not the most uh, efficient way um, of growing anything. Um, and also, it would expose the house to mold. There's a lot of other issues. Uh, growing indoor would certainly require um, uh, your landlord's permission. Most people aren't going to get it. They'll grow anyway. They'll be growing illegally. Mm. And, uh, and if they're caught um, not following the, the restrictions, then they're facing six months in county jail, or um, if uh, they have certain prior offenses, they're facing two, three, or four years in state prison, actual prison, not jail, prison. So this initiative is not, you know, this doesn't sound like legalization to me. The more, the more I read about it and hear about what it's going to do, the, the less I'm convinced that this is even a legalization initiative, and it shouldn't even be called that. Yeah, I want to thank you for helping us get the word out, Dragonfly. Uh, so we're going to beat this, and tomorrow we've got that event coming up. So, um, yeah, you can, my viewers, I want to tell the viewers that we, uh, to come to 318 Valencia tomorrow at 7 p.m., the Eric Cazada Center, to get ed at 7 p.m. to 9 to get educated on Prop 64, because the more you know, the more you dislike it. That's how it feels for everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank uh, you so much. Really appreciate it. Cheers. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you then. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, she was, she was, she'll be there too tomorrow. You get to meet Dragonfly Lelouz. And um, I've, so I wanted to show you something about the drug war. Now, this, this is the drug war here. This is, um, I've got. I wanted to urge you to watch Frank's show. Uh, now, this is my dad, and the police killed him. Uh, this is the day. This is the same day he was killed 47 years ago, October 20th. And it, it happened about 5 o'clock in Oakland, California. And he uh, he was a musical genius. And so, anyway, rest in peace, Dad. Bye-bye.